DeMarvin Leal is quickly coming one of the top defensive ends in all of college football. NFL analysts and scouts are all over his talent, all over his abilities, and he's just set to have a monster year. Even on a loaded Texas A&M roster, it's going to be fun to see what he can do. A lot of strength and power combinations, uh, and but also there's quickness into the game as well. And it's going to be exciting to see what he can do. Today we're going to break him down. So, DeMarvin Leal, let's go. Let's start out with a banger here. Uh, just an incredible play by DeMarvin Leal. <clears throat> it's something that you're not going to see from a lot of players, especially against a 315-pound player like Stone Forsythe. So it's not like he's going against some random guy that's no good. Stone Forsythe is, it was an all-conference talent. And it, it's just incredible what Leal was able to do him, do to him. So we got here on the edge, just a little bit outside of Forsyth. And he's just going to physically dominate here. And, and it's what makes the play, makes the play in the backfield tackle for loss. But it's just a, a display of his strength. So right away, we're going to get hands on right there. He's got hands on the shoulder pads. And... You, Inside is good, but it's not necessarily a guarantee that he's going to win, but he has a good grip here. And you see Forsyth doesn't really have anything on either side. He kind of has the shoulder pad here, but Leal literally is right under his shoulder pad. So this is, is a good situation for him to be in. This is obviously a win for him. And he's just going to throw him like a rag doll there. Like just unreal. Just a, a great display of strength and power and a play that he's going to make frequently in 2021. The running back has nowhere to go. And, and while there's three other guys for Texas a and to back him up, it's just absolutely incredible what he's able to do to throw a 315-pound man on the ground. Now, he's given up some weight against him, but they, obviously the power is not a concern at all. Just throws him to the ground and makes the play. And it's not the only play that we're going to see where he does that. It was just, <sighs> wow. And another play here, this time a little bit of finesse. And it's just playing with his hands, using the power within his hands. We'll talk about his teammates play right there in just a sec. But it's just a great setup. It's not, he's not just power. He's not just speed. He, he has a good combination of moves when he's going after the passer. And as you can see, Kyle Trask has to throw this ball earlier than he wanted to. And it's just, and it, you can attribute it to really DeMar Valilo here. There's the only guy that's going to get to Trask, force the play to develop quicker than Trask wants it to. And we'll go back here. So Trask is looking right now. He has two crossers over the middle, and he wants to get he wants to get Kadarius Tony the ball around here, so that he can get up here. And we're going to see Demani Richardson makes an incredible play because Richardson's speed is incredible. And he's so fast, and he doesn't get enough recognition for what he does for this defense. But he makes this play here after Leal does his job. Because if Leal doesn't get to Trask here, I don't know if if Tony scores or not, but it might be a different result because he's able to take his time and get the ball off. But because Leal is there, Trask has to throw the ball now instead of maybe a little bit later. But this closing speed is just cra just crazy. I mean, look where he comes from, too. Like, he's not even guarding him, but he takes a risk because he sees now this This is the one thing I have a concern with, uh, is if, if this guy doesn't go with it, it goes with Tony and this guy gets hung up, which he kind of does, Kyle Pitts is wide open. But they have it in the system where this guy waits, he passes him on, and Richardson sees and just watch the closing speed here. I know we're talking, not talking about Richardson, but that's, wow, that's just a great play. But a combination of Leal making the passer throw the ball a little bit earlier, making Trask just make a decision quicker than he wants to, and this is how he does it here. So as you can see, lined up a little bit outside of the tackle. He makes a move like he's going to go uh, around the edge. 
And what he's going to do is he's going to push just enough of the tackle's hands to dip inside and make the play. And just getting those hands and making sure that the tackle doesn't get hands on him so that he can't control the line of scrimmage, control where he wants to go, and pushes him outside, dips inside. And like I said, if Leo doesn't get there, it probably maybe goes for the same thing. Richardson speed obviously is something that not a lot of teams have, but this is just another play that Leal starts and affects, and it's not, he doesn't get a sack, he doesn't get a tap for loss, but he's able to affect the play, and he's able to make Trask throw the ball before he wants to. Florida's driving on this on this drive here, and while they do end up scoring, uh, you just see flashes of why this defense is so tough to beat in the trenches, and while you got Buddy Johnson leaving, the front line becomes even that more important. And there's there's depth on this line, but DeMarvin Leal is just going to be the standout. And while teams are going to try and do their best to limit what he can do, there's only so much you can do at certain times. Because if you leave him one-on-one with someone, it's probably not going to end up well for them. And even, that, even if he has to be more on the inside. So he's still technically here. He's head up on the tackle. Got a little trips look here. So it looks like he's kind of inside, but I, I would have no problem with DeMarvin Leal playing on the inside. I think he can handle himself well. When they lose interior line like Bobby Brown, they're going to need a guy to plug out the middle. And like I said, there's depth at defensive end. They have depth on the inside too. So there's not a lot of worry about this group, and especially with a talent like Leal, whose ceiling is so high. You don't have to worry about what he's going to do. So it's a similar play to the last one. Gets hands on, rips him away, and it really, it's just, the tackle obviously knows he's, he gets up and he is just like, dang, man, I just can't believe that I am not as good as DeMar Valeo. And like, this is quick. Gets hands on right away. Shed doesn't essentially make the play, but he's a contributor. Now, Brown, who I mentioned earlier, crosses face here on the center and clogs up the lane, but Leal is also there in case that didn't happen. Buddy Johnson's also there as well. So again, just the power in his hands to be able to get hands on and to just shed a guy and, and get his eyes back on where the running back is. It, it's just, you don't get that a lot with a defensive end, or I should say you don't get that on every team. And, Texas A&M is just so lucky to have DeMar Valeo on their team because he's going to bring the power on the inside, the power against the tackles that he faces, and tackles for loss like this are a frequent occurrence. We flip to the Mississippi State game, and Leo just displays his finesse, and a guy his size just should not be able to move like this, and it just shows off his athleticism what he's able to do, and you'll see that he is not just a power guy. He, he's able to use smart plays. He's able to set things up. So as you can see, he does a little spin move to get on the inside. He'd been setting that up earlier in this game. He'd been doing a lot of shuffles to the outside, looking like he's going to go around the edge. And we'll talk about a play later where he does go around the edge, but this is the stuff where you got to mix things up, and he does a great job of doing just that. You're going to see good use of the hands, a nice spin move. I feel like you don't see a lot of spin moves in college anymore that are this efficient and this tight. And like I said, good use of the hands here. He's going to jab like he's going outside. You'll see his hands. You see it, he's knocked away. The tackle's hands, tackle's now leading to the outside. He's headed inside, and it's just nothing the quarterback can do at that point. Now, could Costello have thrown it to his check down there? He could have, but this play it just happened so fast where Leal's already in his face, and there's really not much that he can do. So, like I said, fakes it outside uses his hands to knock away and force the tackle to lean in the opposite direction. And yeah, as you can see, he's reaching. Easy sack, not much you can do at that point. Late in the first half, 
Mississippi State's trying to drive, and this is a play that's going to kill some of that momentum. Now, they do throw an incomplete pass, but a, a sack here is very costly, and DeMarvin Wheel almost gets it, which is just a great play. Now, here's the thing. Earlier in the drive, other Texas A&M defensive ends were trying to get around the outside here and just couldn't. And Leo just finally says, you know what? I am the superior athlete here and just knows what he needs to do, knows what he is going to have to do to get around the edge here. Now, as you can see, when he lines up, he's going to start at the 44 here. And he gets to the 50, which is like the last point where he has to get around the edge to bend and flatten out. And he just explodes off the ball, gets to the edge, dips his hips, flattens out. Because the thing is, is he knows that at that six-yard mark, Costello's stepping up in the pocket. So if he doesn't, if he doesn't go at that point, he's just going to get pushed around the edge, and Costello's going to step up, and then this might be a completed pass. But because there he dips, keeps the hands of the tackle off of him. Just a great play right there, and there's really not much that Costello can do at that point. DeMarvin Lille is an incredible talent, a future NFLer for sure. There's a great blend of power and speed in his game, and it feels like he's just getting better and better every single week. You, you see a great blend, like I said, of power and speed. There's a lot to like about his game. He's going to be pressed for st stats, really, which I guess aren't really important to him. Texas A&M is just so loaded at the defensive line that it's going to be tough for one player to stand out. But if he keeps making plays like this, he's definitely going to stand out and teams are going to notice. Now, can he challenge for the number one overall pick? I'm not sure, but he definitely has the talent to do that. You know, we've seen some incredible displays of power and ability to make extraordinary plays and make big plays for Texas A&M when they need it the most. Marvin Leland, Texas A&M will be one of the best in the country uh, defensively, and plays that we've seen today are evidence of that. It's going to be an exciting year for him and for Texas A&M. Oftentimes he has to do their part, but this is an exciting player to watch, an exciting defense to watch, and DeMarvin Leland should rack up the awards when it's all said and done.